Okay. Catherine is here or she's trying to connect. Hi, Catherine. We cannot hear you, but that's okay. Yes, we... yes. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, another reboot of the computer. <laughs> Of course, of course. Uh, I don't think we like Zoom over here and uh, in um, in my place. Same here. <laughs> I, I I just had to update it. I haven't used it since our last meeting, and I signed in six minutes to go, and it took a while to update. And uh, yeah. yeah. So I have started recording already. I hope it's right. okay with with all of you. So welcome uh -huh. to our last meeting uh, before our uh, trip to Leros. Uh, in fact, for me, I am already in Leros. So let me just take this opportunity and show you a little bit the area. There's no need, Labro. There's absolutely no need. Don't worry. Don't no worry need. <laughs> we'll, we'll see it in a few weeks. Lovely. Holy moly. So this is where- Oh, cool. Wow. Be. Uh, I don't know what- You're in Sony. Here in Australia. And uh, oh, Layla, hi. Over there. yeah, we're freezing here, freezing. <laughs> so I'll get, I'll give you some, some warm, and uh, heat. So this is the surrounding area. Over there, to the distance, it's the, the castle. I'm not sure what you can see, but anyway, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. And this is the scenery anyway around the hotel. This is our hotel, and uh, the sea is right next to it. Of course, you can go stream. So, enough of a good time. Let's go back to work. So, I'm not sure if I have a good reception here. Can you hear me well? Yes, very well. Yes. Okay, perfect. So. Let's get started then with our agenda. And uh, first in the agenda was the welcome. And uh, I would like to thank you all, of course, for, for being here. We are getting to the final you know, the point. Our destination is Leros and to uh, accomplish what we have set to accomplish from several months ago. Um, I would like to ask, I, I, it looks like we're fewer people today, so we could very quickly go around the room and introduce ourselves, even though I said that uh, we will have only the new people introducing themselves, but so that the new people can know everybody. Uh, I'm Lavros Sidosis. I am from Radkes University. I see Rob next to me. Uh, uh, I'm Rob, I'm Chair of the British Societal ISMS and Vice President MLMI. Maria is next. Uh, Maria Cecilia Mosquera. Yeah. I work at the University of Nicosia Medical School in Cyprus. Gloria. Hi, I'm Gloria. Um, I'm an anthropology student at UCL. Great. Our new member, Elena Nikiforu. Hi, everyone. So I'm Elena Nikiforu. I'm a rheumatologist from King's College Hospital in London, and I'm a recent ad addition to this wonderful team. So thank you. Thank you, Elena. Welcome. Welcome to the team. Fraser? Fraser Burrell. I'm Professor of Lifestyle Medicine and Innovation, Newcastle University, currently in Birmingham, and Director of Science and Research for British Society for Lifestyle Medicine and Editor-in-Chief of the journal Lifestyle Medicine. Great. Thank you, Fraser. Midi? Hello to everybody. My name is Mehdi. I'm a PhD student of Rutgers University, and my supervisor is Professor Sidos. Thank you, Mehdi. Emmanuel? Hi, I'm Manuel Lissaprilakis, Emmanuel. I'm a PhD candidate in classics at Rutgers University with an interest in the ancient Mediterranean diet. Thank you, Manuel. Eleni Sultanakis? Hello. I'm uh, Eleni Sultanakis. I work at the University of Southern California in the biology department and focusing on exercise science and nutrition. Thank you. Carolina? 
Hi, I'm Karolina and I'm from Poland and I lead a Polish foundation for diabetes. I'm also the educator and I'm starting the new newest thing is that I'm starting my PhD from patient advocacy and from diabetes, of course, but also lifestyle medicine in diabetes. So. <laughs> Thank you, Karolina. Perfect. Leila? Hello everyone, uh, Leila Karimi from Psychology, RMIT University, Australia. Thank you, Leila. Hannah? Yeah, hi, I'm Hannah. I'm a medical student at the University of Nicosia. I'm currently based in Cyprus, but in a couple of weeks we'll be moving back to England and I'll be working with the King's College London medical students. Perfect. Thank you, Hannah. Adigoni? Uh, yes, I'm Bigoni and Antigone Kouros. I'm from Melbourne, La Trobe University from the discipline of dietetics. Um, I'm a Med Mediterranean diet researcher. I also work in private practice as a clinical dietitian, helping my patients follow a Mediterranean diet. Thank you, Digoni. Thank you. Russell? Hi, I'm Russell Conduit. I'm from RMIT University in Melbourne, and I'm a sleep researcher. Thank you, Russell. Leonida? I'm Leonidas Karagounis. I'm Professor of Research Translation Enterprise at ACU and the Mary MacKillop Institute in Melbourne. And I'm an adjunct professor at the Institute of Social and Preventive Medicine, Bern, Switzerland. Thank you, Leonida. Urania? Um, hello, everybody. I'm Urania Gologodroni. I'm a pediatrician with a PhD in epidemiology and public health. I work at the Cyprus University of Technology, and I'm mainly interested in kind of adopting lifestyle medicine across the lifespan, but especially the early years of life. Thank you, thank nice you. Nice to meet everybody. Thank you, Rania. Um, now, E1198, I'm sorry, but I, I keep forgetting. <laughs> sorry, um, I'm Simone. I'm a psychologist and lecturer at RMIT in Australia. Thank you, thank you very much. Robel, Robel? Robel from Monash University, PhD student in Australia, and under supervision of Professor Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Catalina? Hi, I'm Catalina, lifestyle medicine physician from Chile, but currently living and studying in the Netherlands. Thank you, Catalina. Linda? Hello, I'm Linda Errington. I'm a medical sciences librarian based at Newcastle University in the UK. Thank you, Linda. Ka Catherine? I'm Catherine Etziopoulos, uh, uh, Vice President MLMI, um, Clinical Dietitian Background. I'm the Dean of Health and Biomedicine at RMIT University, Med Diet Researcher. Thank you, Lavros. Thank you, Catherine. Elena? We cannot hear you. It's muted. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm Yevena Tveit. I'm professor at the uh, Faculty of Medicine, uh, Novi Sad, Serbia, and I'm specialized in nutrition and now turning completely into, into lifestyle medicine. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, Elena. Ella? Hello, hello everyone. Uh, I'm a dentist. My name is Ella. I work in Scotland on a very remote uh, island um, on west uh, co um, on west coast of Scotland. Um, I am a dentist, but I am very very much fascinated by lifestyle medicine. I um, uh, I passed the exam, and I would like to switch from dentistry uh, to lifestyle medicine. Very nice, very nice. I hope, I hope you do. Uh, Audrey? Hi everybody, I'm Audrey. Um, I'm a med diet researcher in the University of Limerick. Previous worked with Catherine and Antigone in Australia, particularly interested in Mediterranean diet in non-Mediterranean um, countries. So nice to meet you all. Thank you, Audrey. Costadina? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Costandina Costandino, and uh, I am an associate professor at the University of Nicosia Medical School and a molecular biologist by background. Thank you, Costandina. Alicia. Hello, I'm Alicia Baska. I'm from Poland. I'm a physician and public health resident. I'm also an executive director of the Polish Society of Lifestyle Medicine and vice president of the European Lifestyle Medicine Council. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Barbara, I was waiting for you to drink your. Tea or water. I haven't had 
It's it's wine. Oh, nice, nice uh, color. Even Catherine, you have yours as well. I haven't eaten yet. My dinner. It's it's seven fifteen here. So if I if my tongue is is getting twisted, then it's because I haven't eaten. I was <laughs> drinking. So I'm professor of medicine. Um, specialist in internal medicine. My research focuses on chronic disease prevention and management. I have a PhD in EPI, uh, Master of Public Health, and I'm very interested in uh, dietary interventions, and I've done heaps of trials in this space. Thank and I'm deputy dean um, in health and biomedical sciences uh, at, at RMIT, working with Catherine and um, a few of the others in on the call. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barbara. Dana? I am Dana. I, I am a physician. I work in the field of public health, of uh, biomedical anthropology and lifestyle medicine in Bucharest. Thank you, Dana. Anthe? Hello, everyone. My name is Anthe Margaroni. I am a sociologist and uh, an administration of the Mediterranean Lifestyle Medicine Institute. Uh, we have already communicated in several times, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in Laris. Thank you, Anthony. Robert. Hi, guys. Sorry, my, my apologies for coming on late and having to leave early. It's a busy time of day for me. Um, my name is Robert Bird. My, my focus is very much physical activity. I run a lifestyle medicine centre here in Hertfordshire in England, and that's what I'm doing today, working with different cohorts with different clients with different issues. Um, my apologies for coming on late, as I was saying, having to leave a little early, and I'm looking very much forward to meeting you all in Leros. Great, thank you, Robert. <clears throat> Emma, Emanuela. Hello, everybody. I'm Emma, I'm a physician from Romania. I'm a family uh, medicine doctor, working in the emergency department, uh, very passionate about uh, lifestyle medicine. And uh, I founded the Romanian Society of Lifestyle Medicine back in 2019, and uh, I'm very happy to see you today. Thank you, Labros. Thank you, Emma. Golnor? Oh, hello. I'm Gunnar, one of the um, GPs uh, in Scotland, NHS GP. I've got a background in public health and epidemiology. Um, and um, uh, being from Turkey and living in Scotland, uh, um, so uh, I, I have the share of both sides. Um, looking forward to seeing you in, in Laros. Great. Uh, a bit of sunshine. Thank you. Thank you, Gulnar. Thank you. Bernardo? Hello, good morning. Uh, I'm uh, Bernardo, I'm a psychiatrist from Portugal. Um, uh, I was president uh, of the, the Portuguese uh, Society of Lifestyle Medicine and Lifestyle Medicine Physician too. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to be here uh, joining this, uh, this meeting. So nice to see you all. Thank you, Bernardo. Thank you. Zoe and Sam, father and uh, daughter. Hi everyone, um, I'm Zoe. I'm a medical student um, at the University of Nicosia. Just finished my um, second year exams, so on to third year. Um, Congratulations. Special interest in lifestyle medicine, of course, as everyone else here. Um, this is my dad. Hi everyone, and uh, apologies for coming on a little bit late. You get two in one in Zoe and I, because apparently <laughs> we're like twins. Um, my interest in um, is the complete lifestyle for my uh, clients in terms of uh, pre and post uh, retirement, in terms of, you know, getting into shape mentally, especially, and um, uh, apart from the monetary side, the lifestyle. And I work very closely with the, the National Institute of Integrative Medicine in Melbourne with Professor Arvind Sala there, my strong interests. Thank you, Sam and Zoe. Thank you. Natasha? Hello, everyone. I'm Natasha Beneka, I'm an exercise expert. I'm a professor at the Democratic University of Thrace and focusing on uh, exercise interventions, addressing musculoskeletal problems. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. <laughs> Elena? 
Hello, everyone. I'm sorry for joining late, but I had class. It's a pleasure to see you. Um, my name is Elena Kurtzelis. I'm an associate professor in epidemiology and public health at um, the University of Nicosia Medical School and also head of the Department of Primary Care and Population Health. And it's wonderful to join this initiative and to see it actually being pulled up into action in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. And last but not least, Christiana. Yes, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christiana Dimitro. I'm an assistant professor in epidemiology and public health at the University of Nicosia Medical School, where Elena and Costandina are uh, coming from. It's very nice to see you all uh, today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christina. So thank you all. It took a little longer because at the beginning we were fewer people here, so I didn't think that it will take that long. So I apologize for that, but I think it was a good chance for our new members also to get to know the older members and for us also to remember uh, to, um, uh, you know, hear it again and make sure that we know what everybody's doing uh, in their own fields. So going quickly through the agenda for today, uh, we will start with updates from the coordinators of the task groups. This will be the last updates that we will uh, ever hear from the various task groups, because again, the goal is to try to uh, get out of silos and really going uh, into this wonderful holistic approach that we call lifestyle and in our case, Mediterranean lifestyle. So, uh, but we need to hear from them, see what they have done up to this point, and then um, what is the next step? Following, I will ask the two coordinators of the definition groups, group one and group two. Uh, group one was led by uh, Elena. Unfortunately, she had uh, to, uh, you know, to drop out because of uh, some personal issues. And Catherine has uh, agreed to um, step up and, and help with this group. So thank you very much, Catherine. And Leonidas uh, will be represented, representing group two, and he will give us the update from there. Um, I just want to say about those two groups that uh, I've had reports of uh, espionage uh, going on between groups. Uh, we have found a double agent actually who was working for both groups, and I'm not sure the damage that has uh, incurred to the, the whole operation, but today is the chance to clarify everything and we'll see how this thing will go. But the, the competition is fierce and uh, everybody knows, I, I'm in Leros, actually my main mission here is to find the, the best uh, uh, trophy you know, for the winner. So I'm, I'm still looking, but it doesn't look good. It's, it's, it's very, very tough. Uh, then we will talk a little bit about conference logistics and other business if we have to. So I would like to start without uh, wasting any more time with our progress updates. Let me just say that the work that has been done by all groups is amazing. To be honest, I was not expecting it to go that well. There is lots of work in front of us, of course. Some groups have been... Um, uh, progressing much better, much faster, because they were also formed earlier, and they will um, act and they will play a role of a model for the other groups as well, so that at the end we have a very coherent and a very, um, you know, similar product from all the groups in order to be able to publish easier, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, may I ask Catherine, to start with the update from her group. Uh, let's try to keep it less than five minutes per group so that we are you know, still on time. Thank you, Catherine. Oh, okay. My first challenge, five minutes. Um, I guess in brief, uh, we, we have a large group. Uh, we split off into two at one stage and then reformed again. Many, many members are here. I won't call names out, otherwise I use my five minutes up. Uh, we, we've produced a, a number of activities. One is the overarching definition, which has been shared by, by the second collation of groups. Um, a narrative document that um, uh, all members have contributed to, which is um, edging on 40 pages. 
and uh, we think that that's going to become a book. And uh, and then uh, we've also got um, a systematic review uh, process, and Linda's been instrumental here. Um, Eleanor, of course, who's uh, been uh, a co-lead co um, and uh, and instrumental to adding lots of the documents on online and Costandina and many others that I can see on screen. Um, with uh, the systematic review at this stage, and uh, we are meeting again with Linda, we've got up to about 8,000 articles and we haven't started the extraction, but we're working it a little bit um, uh, in the reverse in that with our collective knowledge, and we've got uh, a breadth of dietitians, nutritionists, GPs, epidemiologists, um, dentists. Um, we've we've uh, we've pulled together materials with references, and we're going to then look at a systematic review to build the the additional evidence. So it's a little bit of a different order, um, but we've been very productive, and um, and we're hoping that through the letters conference and afterwards that we will have a number of publications that come out of these uh, searches and, um, and other elements we'll talk about in LEROS is uh, other clinical applications because we do have many general practitioners who want to use the materials in lifestyle medicine in their practice um, and we're optimally placed to deliver on that um, with the combined groups LUMBROS. So I'll move away from the silo after this. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. I'm sure you will. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the nutrition group uh, is the, 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 the largest group that we've had out of the four that finally mm -hmm. formed and, uh, and did all the work. Uh, it was a challenging group to manage, and I would like to thank uh, Catherine, of course, for doing a wonderful job coordinating it. Now I would like to ask uh, Rob, and uh, along with Fraser and Linda, Let's let's use this opportunity to also uh, describe a little in a little more detail uh, what the 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 process was to set up uh, this um, uh, research you know the research question and the research strategy that I think that we can use this research strategy strategy set for this group as a model. And of course, the nutrition group is very close as well as a model for the rest of us because we are a little bit behind. In, I'm including my group, the, the fifth group, so there are five groups. Uh, so I would like to ask Rob to, to begin and then uh, please just involve in the discussion, Fraser and, Lin and Linda, as, as needed. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Labros. And first of all, Leonidas, uh, Zoom is a problem for all of us. Every time I, I, I get onto the MLMI Zoom, I have to update. So you're not alone. Don't worry. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, many, many thanks indeed to our 12 members, the Health, Health, Healthy Relationships Group. Uh, they've done a power of work, I have to say. Uh, I've just simply been observing them working. It's been wonderful. Uh, and Fraser and Linda will say what they've been up to. But uh, the the last work, the report, the last report, the latest one uh, was sent by Fraser yesterday, <clears throat> and this uh, it summarized uh, the work of our group, which uh, subdivided into around about three subgroups, but there were different numbers. The, the bulk of the work was in subgroup two. So there was a working definition. <clears throat> uh, the historical context was given. There's an umbrella review of systemic reviews and, uh, using Prospero protocol and progress reviews, uh, reviewers and flowchart are all on that report. The PICO question and people living in the Mediterranean, what evidence from systemic reviews exist that health relationships and social connectivity affects lifespan and quality of life compared to elsewhere. So uh, it just remains for me to say, because this is the last meeting, to thank you, everybody. Uh, that some, uh, I think Hannah in particular, seemed to get through an awful lot of the uh, 2,659 studies were identified and we ended up with 44, which were included in the review. So, uh, Fraser, can you come in on the nitty gritty and Linda following on, please? Do can you hear me now? Is that okay? I'm afraid they're grass cutting here. Yes. So our, our Prospero is it's a kind of registered protocol. Um, obviously, Linda's worked on a lot of these systematic reviews, so she's been 
feeding anything to all the other groups as well. I, I think, you know, the bottom line comes is that it's a lot of work, screening the abstracts, looking through the full text reviews and deciding what's going to be included. And obviously what we've tried to do is to, it's still ongoing the data extraction process, but we've tried to pull out some key highlights which inform our and update our, our working definition. So, you know, you, you're welcome to have a look at the model. Um, I think, I don't think Labros has circulated our document to everybody because it only went around our group last night, um, but please do use it. Linda, anything you want to add before the, uh, the grass cutters come by here again? Linda, we cannot hear you. Not yet. If you could stay here, Linda, she'd be talking about how she's been trying to help the groups kind of apply our process. Um, but the key is a systematic review should have a prospectively registered protocol on a website which is held at York or Prospero. Um, people are very welcome to adapt our, our protocol. Um, essentially, you just need to formulate your own PICO question uh, with the pillar of interest. And you know, hopefully, having got a structure in place, that makes it much easier for everybody else to do that. But as the nutrition team have explained, there can be an awful lot of literature. So we started, I think it was over 20,000 documents, and we, we narrowed it down by limiting it to to an umbrella review, that is a review of the systematic reviews, and that's left us with a useful amount of evidence. Um, Linda, can can you can you hear us? Can we hear you? Do you want to try again? We still cannot hear you. It doesn't look like you're muted, but still we cannot hear you. Anyway, it's just a case of having to rejoin. <laughs> If you're able to correct this thing, please uh, let me know and we can come back to you because I would be interested to hear from you how have you worked with the various groups and where everybody is because, again, your role has been very, very significant in uh, trying to, of course, lead everybody and help everybody on this process, but also make it, again, similar for all the groups. So please, if you're able to, maybe you should disconnect and connect back uh, in. And uh, if you're able to do it, let's do it. So yeah, thank, I'll you. Continue to join it. Yeah, th thank you again. Thank you for the team. So let me just take this opportunity to, to mention that all of this work that has been done up to this point and has produced what we needed for this meeting, which is the definition of course, is much more to it because the next step, the next question will be, okay, Mediterranean diet, Mediterranean diet. You know, I keep going back to, to diet. Mediterranean lifestyle, what does it do? What is the evidence that all of these things are healthy, et cetera, et cetera. So all, all of this work that has been done has uh, prepared all the groups to answer many more questions than just to get the definition out. Definition is very important, no question about it. But then, of course, there are many other questions that we should be able to, uh, again, answer using either the research method that we have already in place or adapting it to new questions and, uh, uh, and then come up, of course, with uh, uh, research ideas which we will follow with uh, our research teams. And that's where the opportunity is, of course, for collaborations, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of good things uh, can come out of this. So next, I would like to ask uh, Barbara to give us a, a report from the stress group. There is no stress in the stress group. I can report that. Um, so we have, done uh, a working definition. However, we so far agreed that there is no specific definition for stress or well-being in Mediterranean region, but we're still sort of trying to tighten that up. We, we treat um, well-being as an outcome, not as a risk factor or, or a predictor. And we formulated our PICO question and uh, Helen 
um, okay. created a, a review of a historical context uh, for well-being in in uh, Mediterranean region. So that's where we're at. I don't know, Helen. Do you want to add anything? Hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I I just wanted to include a few more words for the um, definition, which you didn't include, which is the biodiversity and cultural diversity and the seafaring of the water, the connectedness through the Mediterranean Sea. So I, I haven't seen that in anybody's uh, definition. So I thought those were important. They came out, they came out from my research from the background, the historical perspective, that uh, all these benefits are stemming from the biodiversity and the diversity in foods that the culture, the cultural diversity have um, uh, created in the Mediterranean region. So that's all I have to add. Great. The, with, reg with regards to the systematic review, we have about 6,000 articles we're screening through currently. So that's work in progress. Perfect. Thank you, Barbara. Um, uh, Russell, for the slip. Sorry, I was having problems. I'm unmuting myself for a moment there. Um, yeah, the sleep groups um, had a had an interesting journey. We first started off with a uh, quite an extensive literature search, doing a a, a more traditional um, search for a, a standard systematic review, and we turned over about eighteen thousand papers. We started. Uh, Waiting our way through that, but then we decided to pivot and go for a more an, an umbrella review, um, which was advised to us in a last group meeting. We've since um, embarked on that, um, and we're up to the data extraction phase for that. So we've got the Prospero um, document together, and we formulated the PICO question for that. And we've um, drafted a definition document, um, which is a live document, which we're still tweaking. Um, but we've got a substantial amount of that done at this stage. Uh, and we could possibly go back to our original systematic review search if we if we want to revisit that in the future. But at the moment, we're focusing on the umbrella review. And we're down to, I think, it was somewhere between 20 and 30 articles for data extraction from that. Uh, and Maria and um, uh, Bernardo are both um, with us. So if, if either of you want to add anything to that, and, and also Linda... Um, feel free to, but that's pretty much where we're at at this point. Great, thank you, Russell. Is Linda back? I am, can you hear me this time? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Excellent, apologies for the technical issues. I've got no idea what went wrong there. Um, so we started with um, a PCOS model which we had hoped would help standardize the searches across all teams. It ended up not being quite as straightforward as um, I'd hoped because um, we were getting hugely different numbers from the search strategy, depending on the, the individual um, the areas. So for example, Mediterranean diet, we were finding an awful lot more results from the initial search than we were sleep, for example. Um, so we, we've gone back and forth with the searches quite a lot. It is always an iterative process. But what, what we're aiming for is an umbrella review of systematic reviews across all groups at the moment. But it, it has taken us a little while to get there. And um, as Russell said, we, we started off with a broad systematic review. Um, and those papers exist in a file and they, they may well go back to that file at some point, but we're now concentrating on that umbrella review of systematic reviews. And similarly, with the nutrition group, we went through a, a number of stages. I did a separate search um, to, to identify um, some definition terms because the PCOS um, search strategy wasn't actually helping with the definition per se. Um, so as I say, yeah, it's, it's been an iterative approach. There have been several search strategies written um, but we do have 
the one search strategy for umbrella review of systematic reviews for healthy relationships, sleep and nutrition now. Great. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. And uh, unfortunately, Dimitris, who is uh, coordinating uh, our search for the physical activity and the movement patterns, he could not join today. So um, what we can report from, from our group is that we are working with Linda or we're, Dimitris and Medi, they are working more with Linda, we have also uh, going that same route, even though we're not really there yet. Uh, Mehdi, would you like to say uh, a few words about uh, the latest that you have uh, in terms of, of papers and reviews that you've done with Dimitris? Actually, we provided a draft in terms of uh, physical activity uh, from uh, 1900 by now but the most important thing is that at the moment uh, we have no idea about the amount of papers that are exist and we are waiting for a, a search strategy because we have already got around 25 papers but I started to have my own search strategy and I got 50 papers and it means we have to focus on search strategy to get the proper amount of papers that we're going to uh, include in our study. But uh, for the definition, uh, everything is not everything, but many things is clear because um, in the Mediterranean blue zone, in terms of physical activity, uh, they have the common activity and common form of uh, lifestyle like being active uh, after 80 years old have a physical demanding job and also taking a nap especially in older adults uh, you know I'm talking about the instructor but for exact review paper we need a great search strategy to be in line with the other groups great thank you Mehdi in other words, my group is, is doing badly right now. We're not really there yet. And uh, we are. We definitely need uh, to work a little closer with Linda following the model uh, that has been set by the social connectedness group and the nutrition group. And hopefully we will be there. But uh, Mehdi and Dimitri have, have done a great job in reviewing the, uh, the literature, at least to get the definition out. And that's where we are right now. All groups have submitted their preliminary, again, draft definitions that uh, they were able to get from their searches. These definitions have been uh, have gone to the two groups that they were formed by uh, members of each of the uh, task groups, uh, others belonging to task group uh, subgroup three or in general. And uh, I asked uh, Leonidas and, uh, um, and Ellen to, Eleni to, to help us on this. Uh, 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 what, what, is, what was the name of Eleni? The last... Elena Filippo. Elena, Elena Filippo. Elena Filippo, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Elena Filippo um, to lead those two groups. And indeed, they have started right away. They have they've had already a couple of meetings, or they are having, I think, the second meeting today. And um, they're working hard. Unfortunately, Elena, as I mentioned before, had to uh, leave the group for now and Catherine is, has taken over. So may I ask Leonidas to give us first a report from his group, and then we'll go to Catherine. Again, uh, for the new members, the goal of the conference is to come up with a definition for the Mediterranean lifestyle. Each of the task groups, they researched the definition of the traditional Mediterranean nutrition, physical activity, stress, relief, etc. And then 
Now that we have those draft definitions, we have created those two groups and their work is to put all of this together and come up with the final definition of the Mediterranean lifestyle. We have two groups because we want to approach this probably from different angles. And then at the end, when we get here in Leros, we will put those together and we will come up with a brilliant definition of the traditional Mediterranean lifestyle. So, Leonidas, please. Oh, thank you, Lalo. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? Yes. So just to add one thing, which was I found very interesting in the, the brief emails, in the emails with the brief that you sent through was, you know, we have the, the capacity to be creative should we choose to, um, and how we address this. So we had a, we've had two meetings in, in the last two weeks, one meeting last week, and the other one was uh, set, well, 12 hours ago today for me. Um, and we had to try and, as Lavro said, get, I don't know what it was, maybe if Catherine's was 40 pages, 50, 60, 70 pages into a consensus, which of course, with a lot of opinions and discussions, is very hard to do. One thing we, we, we came across that we discussed this morning specifically was, we have a definition, what are we trying to achieve with that definition precisely? So really starting with the, the end in mind in that, um, one of the, the ideas that we had last, last week was to come up with a, a structure an image. So we have a great graphical designer, I think, in our group, um, Hidden Talents there, but they came up with a very nice image of a, a temple, but we had different pillars. And these different pillars are supporting at the top of the, the arch there, supporting the, uh, the traditional Mediterranean lifestyle. And the different pillars are the pillars for the task forces that we've had along the way. So those are supporting. Um, we had discussions as to if that's applicable or not and which one we put as the base stone and these kind of descriptions which once you see it as an image it really helps define uh, a consensus and what we're trying to to define as mediterranean lifestyle we had several discussions this morning as to how each one fits so we don't have a final consensus on on what the definition is at this point it is work in progress we do hope we will have something well we will have something for the team in Leros to discuss. Um, we have some uh, other discussions with setting up a SharePoint to discuss this and put a, a kind of very short sentence, a couple of sentences together. But it's a very, very difficult task to do that um, in a simple uh, definition. So we've had plenty of discussions. We've had two, two, hour, two one hour meetings and we're working between a, a graphical representation of it supported by a, a, a more, um, yeah, lexiloyo, I suppose, some words together there. Great. Thank you, Leonida. Uh, you just mentioned that this is a very, it's not an easy task. And uh, that was something that we had, uh, I guess, realized from, from day one that to put all of these various definitions together into one definition would be challenging. But at the end, we have a whole conference from 50, I think we are 40 uh, you know, experts from around the world trying to do that. And if we are not able to do that, then there's no hope for this thing. So, but we need we need the definition of the whole thing. We need this holistic exactly. approach. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great need and we will try. And I, I'm sure that we will be successful. So thank you very much for, for doing this. Uh, probably you, you said too much uh, from your, you know, you, uh, you gave us- We know we're gonna win, Labro. We know we're gonna win. So. Details, so but matter. anyway. Hopefully, Catherine was not listening. Uh, so, Catherine. <laughs> well, I didn't know before this it was going to be a competition, Lavros, and I tried to keep in touch with both groups in the background. So, were you talking about me when you said someone is monitoring? Because I did the see double, the columns, the Leonida. I have seen them, I've seen the columns. I'll pretend I haven't. Um, but, uh, but the group that Eleanor has run, uh, we're meeting after this. So, um, so I do want to call on some of the group members to, to, to provide a comment. 
Um, but, but I guess an overarching statement from me is that we are very much um, in our own pillars and have been for a big part of the year. Um, certainly with the Mediterranean diet, uh, we, we have used the UNESCO definition as a, as a basis. I didn't mention this earlier, which has so many lifestyle elements to it. Um, and uh, our task was to expand on that and support some of the additions with evidence. And you will see uh, we've got a two-pager summary and then a 40-pager narrative, which could end up being a paper. But the overarching uh, definition, I think, uh, I like the idea of the, Im the imagery or the concepts or an infographic, but I'll shoot over to Catalina, if you don't mind, who has been um, uh, keeping the notes and putting them online um, uh, on a SharePoint. Catalina, if you're happy to say a few words about how the group has has been developing. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Well, uh, as you said, we're going to meet like uh, in one or two hours. I don't remember exactly. Uh, so then we'll like discuss some more details. But yeah, um, basically, we've been trying to go through the um, through the drafts that the works have been sending to us so that we can just select some some bullet points that summarize the most important aspects for each pillar. So, and then we can come up with a simple plan and so that we can, at the end, the goal is to translate it into actionable messages um, for healthcare professionals, but for the general population. So that's, that, that was actually one question that we had in the first meeting. What is our target audience uh, for this definition? So probably we'll discuss a lot about this uh, in Leros, but yeah, basically that's what been, we've been trying to do so far. And, and Catalina, um, you made a, a really good point in one of your emails about um, whether we should be talking about the behavioural change and, and the multidisciplinary team at this point with the definition, whether that's something that we should address later on, um, that the def definition doesn't include the implementation of the Mediterranean diet but rather or Mediterranean lifestyle, but rather what it is. Yeah. Yes, and the only this is a good point. Uh, again, since this is already uh, complicated, it has already too many factors in there. It's nice. We we need to be focused and stay focused on the definition. What is it? What what was what what was it? And how then we can implement it? It's going to be the next step. One of the next steps. Hmm. Um, so I would like to, to thank the two groups. Uh, you did not have enough time uh, to, to do that. Of course, you know, the more time we have, the more we can think about it. But sometimes I'm not sure if it's very productive. But this is all that this is all the time that we had at this point. And I would like to ask you to uh, have something ready to send to, to me, first of all, and then I will circulate it. Uh, after we, the four of us, myself, Catherine, Rob, and, and uh, uh, Fraser, we look into that and try to probably start creating a final product. Then we will circulate that. So I would like to ask you, if possible, to send those, uh, your draft definitions to me by the end of this uh, month. So the, the 30th, 31st, what is it for in May? May 31st. So uh, let me see uh, if there are anything here in the uh, in the chat. Uh, okay. Uh, Yeah, uh, Elena, Elena Nikiforo, uh, our uh, youngest member, she has, she has a good point. Would you like to uh, say something, Elena, since this is your first meeting as well? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't want to sort of hold back or, or delay uh, um, no, no. because it's probably something that's been discussed before, but my, my I shared this with Catherine and Elena Philippe as well, that my initial thought when I started reviewing the, the documents for the nutrition group was that 
you know, is this, is it, is it the right thing to call it a definition? It's more of, you know, concept with some core features to it, um, more of an umbrella sort of definition, if I can say that I'm not I, kind of there's a few things that I wasn't clear about, but it's becoming clearer as I hear you all talk. Um, one of my questions was the individual components of it and the different task forces, how did you get to those? Was this identity, were these key components of the Mediterranean lifestyle an output of a systematic review or at least a scoping review itself? How did you get to the individual groups that form under this overarching theme of Mediterranean lifestyle? Why not? Why these and not others, for example? How you know? There's a few questions that are still not clear in my in my mind. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah, th th these are good points. So the reason we we went with the defin with the pillars of lifestyle medicine, which are physical activity, um, you know, nutrition, etc. So those were the six task groups, the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. Uh, your point about uh, if we're going if we are going to call it a definition or something else, it's a good point, uh, something that we can think about and and discuss it. Uh, but the I think the important thing is on, on what we're looking to accomplish here, and then we will find a name to you know to call it at the end when uh, we will publish it. So yeah, thank you very much. Those, those were very very good points. Um, so again. Let's let's try to have those two by the end of, of uh, this month, so that we have a few days for the four of us to um, work on it and have something as ready as possible for fruitful discussion when we get to Leros. Um, I would like to, to open the floor to anyone that would like to make a comment uh, up to this point on this process. Um, Please raise your hand, uh, raise your hand and, and let me know if you would like to make a short comment and then we will uh, complete, finish up with uh, some logistics. I see Antigone. Yes, I just have a quick question, Lambros. In our definitions, do we need to include the ancient kind of Mediterranean diet or ancient practices or do we focus on you know, the Mediterranean lifestyle of the last, you know, 100 years. Yeah, so the, the goal from the beginning was to, to, to start from, uh, you know, as far back as possible, because the, it, this is all a continuum. So, and, uh, you know, the, probably the stop point was more important that we should probably stop uh, about 40, 50 years ago, because we all know that during the, the last 40 years, a tremendous change has uh, has happened here in this area in terms of lifestyle with the Western uh, lifestyle um, invading uh, our, our area. So I don't think that we should stop on our way back, uh, but, and that's what I think most groups have done so, so far. So uh, again, I think it's just a continuum the way I see it. Thank you, Digoni. I don't see anyone else at this point. Any of the of, of the leaders of the, of the groups? Catherine, would you like to say something? I was just going to just to add to that discussion, and I think it's important to learn from antiquity. But in the translation or implementation of um, a Mediterranean lifestyle medicine um, approach, um then we, we, we're going to need to contextualize it to every day. Uh, we might be able to embed uh, uh, in the sleep um, uh, domain, try to get an afternoon um, sleep or siesta, but um, some of the practices may not be um, able to be applied in, in this day and age. Um, and particularly um, the alignment with mainstream medicine and nutrition and lifestyle care so um so i think we will we will cross that bridge and um mm. but it is important to document and i think there'll be lots of products from our work um but certainly that uh, the the ancient definition we had a lot of a lot of fun 
Emmanuel uh, added quite a bit to the ancient and Livoni and others, uh, we got very excited about all of the uh, ways the Mediterranean diet has evolved today from the uh, wheat, wine and olive oil of, of ancient times. Three food groups down to a huge bio, someone in our group said biodiversity and now we've got one of the most biodiverse diets on the world, you know, in the world, I would say. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Catherine. Rob? Thanks. I was just thinking of the, the temple and whether it's appropriate or not. We had certainly used that image before, but the roof um, was the, what we call the Six Pillars Plus in um, BSLM. Uh, and uh, it strikes me that what affected the past is affecting uh, the present. And that's uh, the social, economic, cultural and environmental factors. And uh, that's what I think the past has in common with the present. And uh, we can't get past dealing with some of those, uh, as well as looking at the individual components of lifestyle medicine. And so I think it will lead to some fascinating discussions in Leros, and I'm, I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. And uh, again, thank you, especially to, to my guys who work so hard. And uh, it's, as Labro says, it's just the beginning. Definitely. Thank you, Rob. Um, is someone trying to say something or just an open? No, it was some people walking behind Fraser, I think. And Fraser. Okay. So, um, again, what, what Catherine uh, mentioned before uh, is, is right on. Uh, what we will define is what have, has happened in the past and the result of it was a long and healthy life for those people here. So we want to, to find this secret, quote unquote, and then of course, we will need to adapt it in order to export it to other areas of the world and also adapt it to a, uh, the everyday life. Uh, something that we will definitely have a, a very good discussion in, in Leros is, Okay, what if we find something in the Mediterranean diet that has been a very important part of it, but modern Western medicine is, uh, doesn't like it? A perfect example is alcohol, which has always been part of the Mediterranean diet and the Mediterranean lifestyle, but you know, Western medicine right now says, no, no, zero alcohol, uh, etc. So, Again, at this point, what we will uh, uh, report is what has happened. What are they doing? What these people have been doing? Not necessarily that this is what we are proposing, but again, this is something for to discuss in Leros, maybe drinking some wine uh, along with it. So um, any more comments, please, before we go to the- well, One thing, Labro, is, yeah. So, so uh, uh, sorry, our group this morning, uh, this morning for me, sorry, guys, so I don't know, I can't remember who exactly was on the call, their, their geographies, but one thing we discussed was exactly what you've just raised now is that translation to the, the general population, global population, right, and how feasible that is given the, the intricacies of nutrition and the, the tomato that's grown in, in Crete, for instance, is, doesn't have the same microRNAs on it that, compared to the tomato that's grown and the microbiome in the individual that's required in Norway. So how feasible that is, we have our social uh, lifestyle today in every way it's different um, and the cultural differences. But the other thing that I, I haven't seen really addressed, there was a little bit in, in Catherine's task force uh, report there, was on the spirituality. Uh, and that in the Mediterranean region has played a massive, massive role be it the social get together, the festivals, the, the, the fasting from a nutritional perspective. And that is something that has pretty much gone out the window. I know in Greece, people don't really adhere to that anymore, despite all the health benefits that comes with fasting. But um, that, that other pillar, and I've seen that in other lifestyle reviews and the WHO refers to it. And it, is, it has been traditionally a very important pillar in the Mediterranean ecosystem, be it North Africa, Southern Europe, across the board there. It's quite a strong influence. Uh, and that we really haven't captured anywhere. <laughs> yes, Rob, that too. 
Again, yes, Leonidas, this is a very important point. And again, what we have done up to this point, we have accomplished a lot. We were not yeah. claiming that we are, we have reached our goal. Many more uh, ideas might come there and many changes to until we get to the final product, which will be publishable. Uh, I would like here to also mention that Linda has uh, uh, added in the chat that the working title for our umbrella reviews, which is the role of physical activity, nutrition, whatever its pillar in sustaining quality of life, lifespan, health and well-being within the Mediterranean lifestyle and umbrella review of systematic reviews. Um, again, this goes probably, it will be very helpful for the next step. Uh, how does, for example, Mediterranean physical activity uh, is affecting and, and, and how does it contribute to sustaining quality of life, lifespan, etc. So we are definitely in a very good uh, spot in, in the, you know, to start the next important step after the meeting. Uh, but let's get to the meeting first. Let's uh, finalize our definitions. Um, if there are no other points, let me just say a few words about the, the meeting and uh, the meeting in Leros. Uh, Antigone? Just one little point. Um, is there any evidence that the people in the Mediterranean were particularly good at caring for the environment and whether, you know, that warrants its own pillar, you know, the, the environment and, and its impact? on the Mediterranean and the Mediterranean people and how they took care of the environment. So just something we need to be across, I think, in this day and age where the environment and climate change and all those things are so important. If I, if I can just make one comment on that, I, I know there's huge uh, uh, areas in, in Attica where whole forests were taken down to build fleets for the, for the Navy in ancient Greece. So I, my, from what I've read on that, because this is a, a big interest of mine as well, it's that circular health economy, if I call it that, uh, I don't think there was much evidence of that, in, in, for, in my readings at least, in, in antiquity per se, yeah. Mm. And then I think through the Middle Ages, it was more a case of survival than thinking of where, where that e ecology kind of comes into play. But that's a very nice point and, and worth looking at, absolutely. I, I suppose fasting, fasting would be kind to the environment because you're not, you know, consuming animals and, you know, all the animal products. You, you know, so being a vegan part time, you know, for a hundred or two hundred days of the year is being kind to the environment, in a way. It's so. absolutely kind. It's just whether it's purposefully kind or whether it is that's the need because I don't have that many animals to, to live off of and I have to make the animal last. Therefore, I have to find sus other sustainable sources. Um, mm. Maybe I misunderstood, but I, from what I, I, I've read and a little bit I've looked into it, there wasn't that understanding like Aboriginal people have the same here in mm. Australia where they've, they, they've respected the land in a completely different dimension to what anyone does it today. So I, I haven't come across anything like that in, in antiquity. Or right. at any point. Until so mm. these are these are good points, and in fact, the environment we all know that plays a big role in the lifestyle of of people, and this is uh, something that we, we we should probably give a little more attention in the future, and we can start right away. Let's have one last comment from Christiana. Uh, yes, hi. So in, in response to the comment, I, I'm, I'm not an expert on antiquity, but in terms of the uh, Mediterranean diet, it uh, has been found uh, through studies, but also through, um, you know, uh, more mechanistic sort of uh, research, that it is one of the most sustainable diets and that it does respect the environment but, uh, through respecting biodiversity, uh, minimal use of water, uh, minimal use again of uh, pesticides, etc. So um, it is partly covered uh, in uh, when we were talking in the manuscript that we put together for the Mediterranean diet. Uh, but I also agree that 
it is something that affects, uh, is affected mm -hmm. by and affects the whole lifestyle. So maybe it is worth a more um, holistic um, assessment approach. Mm. Thank you, Christiana. Yeah, it's a good point. I think we, we all agree that probably we are missing this, this area and we need to focus a little more. Uh, I've had a very interesting discussion with an engineer, uh, la landscape engineer, I think it was his uh, specialty and uh, uh, it, it was focused on this thing and how sustainable the whole thing is. And of course, how uh, the cities that are built in order to uh, either hinder or uh, uh, promote a healthy lifestyle in terms of moving around and, and cycling, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I see here a very good point from Audrey that uh, actually leads me to the next uh, uh, point, which is uh, what are we doing in Leros? I have a, an agenda that uh, I have worked with uh, Rob and Catherine to, to put together a draft, which I will circulate in the next couple of days for comments and also for people to you know, uh, add, uh, you know, suggest uh, changes, etc. But uh, Audrey's point is, uh, Audrey, would you like to quickly uh, say a few words? <laughs> yeah, look, I suppose um, uh, Leros would be a great um, leverage for something like a Horizon Europe grant and getting, you know, as many of us together in the room to look at different work packages, to look at the calls. There's a call around, you know, health, and sustainability is obviously a key focus of, of Horizon Europe as well. And I think this, you know, the Mediterranean diet pillars um, would, you know, and the the leverage in the room would be a great, a great application. So I think if there's interest within the group um, and there's time and space within the agenda in Leros, we could look to see if we could put an application through the, the, the European calls. They're not too onerous. Um, and you know, if we're looking at different work packages across the different pillars, we could submit something. I think the the, the deadline is October, which you know is is workable towards. So it would be good if 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 you're if you're keen and interested to take part in in this in a research capacity or bringing the work of this forward, um, and getting some money from Europe. Hopefully, then we would have dedicated people to work or bring this work forward. So postdocs or research assistants or PhD students, and I think it would. It would be a nice way for for us to kind of leave Leros still working together on on something bigger. Yes, excellent point, Andre. Definitely, this is one of the the goals of this to um, come up with this kind of uh, actions. And so that brings me to the to my last point, which is uh, let me just uh, if, if you uh, don't mind, I will share my screen for. Uh, a few seconds here um, to just discuss a little bit the the tentative program. Uh, I'm not sure if you can, can you all see my screen? Yes? Yes, we can. <clears throat> can, can you see it? Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, we can, Perfect. yes. So this is a tentative program. We will begin on June 8th at night with a, a, a reception at the hotel. Then on the following day, we will start with uh, our logistics uh, and then the four pillars will present in the next couple of days, their findings uh, with a short presentation and then discussion, half an hour, we will give half an hour for each of those two. So half an hour for presenting and half an hour for discussing each of the pillars. We will start with the mental well-being, sleep, we will have then our lunch and experiential activities. In this first day, we will have the tour of the island, visit military installations, and learn about the very rich history of the area, which of course, as we know, it, it's affecting the lifestyle of everybody. History is, a, is a, an important. We will have our welcome dinner. I will not go into too much detail for on this because they are uh, also, um, uh, still in the works, but we want that to be a surprise as well. 
So the third session is nutrition and social connectedness. Again, one hour for each, half an hour for presenting, half an hour for discussion. And we will end up with the physical activity pillar. So this way we will uh, cover all five pillars, what they have found, what is their next steps. So we will have the chance there to discuss. Then we will move to uh, trying to put everything together. So we will have two sessions for this one, two parts. Uh, I have here some chairs, just names uh, that I have come up with and people will, will let me know if they agree. And we will, of course, change those as needed. We can add, add more people um, uh, or removing people. Uh, then in the afternoon, we will have a very nice excursion to nearby islands. Again, uh, the sea, someone mentioned it before, a very important part of this area. We will have our annual general meeting for the, for the Institute on the last day, early in the morning. And then we will continue with drafting the definition, the final part. We will discuss publications uh, right after our coffee break. And then we will get to the point that uh, Audrey mentioned before. This is a very important part of the conference. What are we doing next? So I think that we should create, start creating or start thinking about creating working groups to develop our future actions. And what are those actions? Conference, certification program, summer schools, research, uh, as uh, Audrey said, uh, you know, trying to uh, apply for research funds and any other ideas that we might have uh that uh, it, it would be good and people would be interested to uh, work and develop for you know the next years with of course the goal to have something uh, to work on for the next year then after we form those groups those groups will meet separately and start brainstorming and start developing plans of action so that we can now for after Leros, we again, we will have groups, but no longer silos. Now all groups will be from people that they are interested in the Mediterranean lifestyle in general. There will be no more, um, uh, you know, we will not focus anymore on, those, on the specific tasks. Again, we want to break the silos. But this way, we will have a group working, organizing the conference for next year, what, what should be, what is the theme, etc. Certification programs, this is something that uh, has uh, been discussed in the past. Do we want certification programs? Do we need them? Do we want summer schools? What kind? When? How? Who? All of these things need to be discussed. But it's a very uh, important part. And then we will have uh, more experiential activities. We will have a cooking lesson, Mediterranean cooking. We have some of the world experts in Mediterranean cuisine, of course, coming to Leros as part of our, they are part of our groups. But here I have asked the local, uh, local chef to really focus on very traditional local uh, recipes. And also we will and, and we will finish with uh, a physical activity component, which is the um, most people think it's just physical activity, dancing, but as we know, it's much more. It's uh, socialization, it's stress management, is 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 everything. So we will finish with a farewell dinner and uh, music and dance in a, a, a very. Uh, well-organized cultural center here with the wonderful um, views, views of the castle, etc. So just quickly going over this program, I will uh, circulate that. Uh, uh, I will send it to all next, probably tomorrow or the day after. And uh, I would welcome, actually, I'm I would like to ask you to, to send me comments and suggest things, suggest maybe topics or anything else you would like to see uh, included. So 
Uh, we're coming up to the end of our meeting. We ha we still have a few minutes. If you want to, uh, oh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I, I would like to ask Anthe to give us just the final, the numbers that we have right now in terms of uh, participants and also a, a few people bring together um, their spouses, kids, friends, etc. So. And Thi, can you give us the latest numbers, please? We've had a few people that dropped out the last minute, but. Okay, for now I have uh, 39 uh, participants to the conference, nine uh, um, additional persons, one baby and three teenagers. Mm. Perfect. That's a nice lineup there. So approximately 40, uh, 40 conference participants. I think that's that's a great number, and uh, also many many other people that they're coming together. So approximately 50 people right now. It's a very manageable group, and uh, we will, I'm sure, we will have a very good time here, uh, productive but also enjoy life. So, any more comments, please. Uh, or if you would like to add something else. Oh, just to thank you, Lavros, for um, your leadership, firstly. And um, the the program is, is as we envisaged all that time ago, experiential. So uh, a coming together of minds to pr uh, produce consensus uh, documents or papers on, on the definition, but to experience the Mediterranean lifestyle through, through the program. So I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, of course, you you were have been instrumental from day one and uh, to put this together. Uh, I do believe that it will be a very uh, productive meeting, but also at the same time, we need as, as humans to also um, learn to, I'm sorry, to, to learn how to, to relax and work at the same time. This balance, which is not very easy. Uh, no. <laughs> um so thank you again and and of course thank you all because this has been a a very you know it's an interesting experiment but it has produced so far uh, extremely good results uh mm. did, did catalina uh, want to say something no i thought someone raised oh oh okay so anything else Final words. I think Manolis Emmanuel Aprilakis just uh, sent me a. Do you want to say a few words, Manolis, on this thing? Yeah, just about the environmental ethics. I mean, uh, we can say so much because the in ancient Greece and Rome, the I mean, nature is infused with divinity. So of course, there's a there's a very serious respect for nature. Very much on a plane that we probably can't even, it's just so different from ours that maybe it's difficult for us to imagine. But of course, I mean, if you look from the pre-Socratics, the pre-Socratic philosophers all the way down through Aristotle and his student Theophrastus, there's a huge appreciation and understanding of the importance of, you know, plants and uh, treating nature with respect. And also, I mean, there are more specific practices than that. I mean, uh, where you grow certain things and where it's best to have certain plants interacting with others just like we see today and then there's also other things like using uh, doing uh, copper work or maybe uh, you, uh, the work of a tannery for instance outside of a city because you don't want to pollute the water or the plants inside of a city also i was thinking for the sleep group um, there's uh, in ancient Sybaris, there's uh, this text about uh, making those things outside of the city and also having um, never riding chariots through a city because the, that kind of noise can disturb sleep, which is they ag acknowledge to be super important. You know, so there's, I mean, they had understandings of these things both on the cosmic level and the religious practice, but also on a more practical level. So uh, it's impossible to say, no, the Greeks didn't care about. Uh, Oh, oh. Nature. I, mean. I was thinking the same, Emmanuel. Sorry, while we're in this philosophical discussion around um, the connection to the weather and how important that was in terms of um, your well-being and the procurement of food. Is it going to rain? Are we going to have, you know, what about the sun? 
Um, and another element that came up in nutrition, which we ummed and about including, was um, the, um, uh, the, the attitudes towards food wastage. It was amartia or, you know, um, blasphemous to throw food away. So uh, that, that, that speaks of elements of caring for what you produce and, and the environment. So the expression is different. Uh, but it is still there. So great to have your um, your research and comments in the mix. Yes, th thank you, Emmanuel. That, that was a very good point. And um, so I, I think on this note, we can we can close the meeting for today. Thank you again very much for your participation today, but also most importantly for all the work that you have, have done during the past eight months or so. Uh, I will see you again in Leros. I'm looking forward to uh, welcome you here. I will be in Leros. Uh, I think I'm traveling here on the 3rd. So if you need anything on your way here, I know that traveling has been a little challenge. Uh, Anthe has sent out a, a note to uh, send here your travel um, itineraries to try to probably help everyone as much as possible to you know for transportation to the hotel uh, even though everything is so you know close here uh, no more than 10 minutes from the hotel both the airport and the uh, the the what what is it called the other one the airport and the port the port the airport port. and the port so but it would be nice if you know we could have someone there to welcome you. So please send and see uh, your travel itineraries, and we're looking forward to see you here. Don't hesitate to call us if you need any help uh, getting here. So thank you again. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of the day, and see you soon. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good evening. Good day, good evening, good afternoon, good yeah. morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. Bye. <laughs>